Second Attachment Club. Is that what I think it means? Okay, we're not gonna talk about how messy my bed is right now. I have laundry to do and I don't want to. I've wrapped my whole physical TBR. Yes, honey's wearing a diaper. She's in her first heat. Ignore. In my January TBR video, I picked The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I'm listening to it right now. I'm about 120 pages in. And l let me tell you what it's about. So basically, our main character, Addie, she made a deal, let's say, with the devil. It's not a devil. It's like a god. But she made the deal at nighttime. And it's like known to never make a deal at night. And no matter how desperate or dire, never pray to the gods that answer after dark. So... Addie prayed to the gods after dark. It's kind of like a genie in a bottle where she made a bargain, but it ended up being a terrible bargain for her. And no one can remember her name. No one can remember her at all. She's just a lost person to this world until one day she meets Henry. And we just met Henry. I'm guessing he's the one who's going to be able to remember her. I've watched like so many wrap ups with this book being talked about. So I am listening to it and I love Julia Whalen. She's one of my favorite narrators. I love her. Four and a half hours in and I have 12 and a half hours left. Also in this video, I'm probably going to be reading Pride and Prejudice, which I'm reading with Brock because Brock really wants to read that book as well. He's really into like the classics right now. So we're going to read that one together because I've never read it. I've watched the movie, the old one, thousands of times. Don't know what the book will entail because I know it's going to be a little slow, maybe a little different. I'm not too excited to read it, but I am because I'm expecting to like it. <laughs> that made any sense at all. I have a really bad cold. All day yesterday, I could not sneeze. It would start and I'd go... <sighs> But then it wouldn't come and my eyes would just start watering. So it was the worst day of my life. I'm very grateful for sneezing today. <laughs> I spent the past hour cleaning my downstairs and it is still early in the morning. So I plan to redo my bookshelves today, which I'm going to film a completely separate video for that. So I'm going to reorganize my bookshelves. I've been feeling something different. Like I just want to completely redo them. I will come back with an update later. Here's to knocking out my physical TBR in 2024. Next morning, hello. I spent all day yesterday reorganizing my bookshelves and I think they look beautiful. I'm sitting in Brock's file right now. I am halfway through. Oh, I'm out of breath from going up the stairs. <laughs> I am loving this book so much more than I thought I would. It came, it, I feel like it got its popularity around the time it came out because everyone was reading it at the same time. And I remember when it did come out, I was not interested in it whatsoever. I was like, no, I'm not gonna like it. How wrong I was. I definitely fell victim to judging a book by its cover on this one. Like, I love it. It is very historical fiction-esque in my opinion, and I think that's because I'm listening to it with Julia Whalen, and it brings me so many feelings back from when I read Kristen Hanna and Henry. He's such a cutie pie and I'm excited to figure out what his deal is because like why can he remember her name when no one else can? And I think I remember like way back when it did get really popular. I think I remember why, like, didn't he make a deal with the same devil in a sense or like the same God? Like, I'm pretty sure he did. I'm going to set a timer for the next three hours to listen to this book as well as do some fireheart embroidery. I think I have like 10 orders to do right now. It's going to take a while. It's going to take longer than three hours probably because I'm, it's still like, it's still a long process even though that it's a very, fairly simple thing to do. Like, embroidery is not that hard, but it does take a little bit. It, like 10 to 15 minutes per sweatshirt but then maybe an additional 5 to 10 minutes for packing it up getting the stabilizer on there setting up the machine like there's little tiny things in between each order that you have to do the snow is still out so I'm still considering it a snow day I do not plan to leave my house today and I'm really excited so I'm also reading kingdom of ash but that's not a part of this vlog okay
hours later. Every month I forget that I still do this bookish box. Um, I got this. I haven't opened it up fully, but I opened this part. Look, fantasy reader. How cute is that? I don't wear a lot of hats, but I feel like when my hair isn't clean, maybe I could wear it. Okay. Um, and then another shirt. They always pack a little shirt in this box, which I think is cute. And I've been using them as pajama shirts. Second attachment club. Is that what I think it means? What's a bookish magnet letter display? It looks like this. I don't know what this is, but we will. So I guess it like can sit on like a bookshelf and you can put like magnets on it. Like what would I put on there? I'm not very creative like that. Main character energy. Here. Ooh, my favorite. These are the tabs that I use, the same brand. Okay, cool. Oh, and cute, some little pins, highlighting pin, highlighter pins. Yes, they always do a pocket book bay. Who is this? Adam. Oh my god, it's um the love hypothesis. Cute. And then one more. There's a book in here, obviously. Oh cute. The Spanish Love Deception, which like I liked. It wasn't the best book ever, but I did like it back in 2020, 20 to 21 when I read it. Cute little addition. Little sprayed edges. Just a hardcover, but I think this one, they always do reversible. Yeah, look. Oh my god, so cute. It says, The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas on it. And then on the back it says, You feel complete in my arms. You feel like home. So cute. Or this is the front, sorry. <laughs> and this is the back. I'm going to keep this on my shelf. Too cute. That is the box, so I always get one, and I haven't canceled the subscription. Don't tell Brooke. That's it. I am 75% of the way through The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I plan to finish it today. Or so much better than I thought it was going to be. It's nighttime. It's actually 5 p.m. <laughs> It feels like nighttime. I go to bed at like eight. I have finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and I'm giving it five stars. Too good. Like right up my alley. I was so impressed with this book. I feel like this is such a good start for my physical TBR journey because like knocking these out because I'm so nervous about it. Like, you know, you have the books on your physical TBR and I didn't want to read this book. Like I did not want to read it, even though that I owned it. And I think that says a lot about my future book buying process. Like I'm so happy that I loved this book and I'm happy that I owned it. So I was able to read it. But in the future, I think I'm going to be more picky about my books that I'm buying. Obviously, I think that's the point of this video. The atmosphere in this book really did it for me. And the message behind artists and all of how like throughout time, like how we should appreciate art, even though that Addie couldn't be remembered by anyone, she left her mark throughout the world, kind of behind the devil's back and in a way that he didn't think she would do and I think that was so smart of her so I'm really really happy with the ending of that book. I do plan to read The Huntress by Kate Quinn next and I'm really really excited. It does have ribbed ribbed edges and I don't love that. I to listen to this book again kind of like I did with Addie LaRue. I know I own it. I also have the audiobook so I'm gonna half listen half read it kind of based on when I can actually pick it up because Brock and I are also starting Pride and Prejudice this week. I have this really pretty pretty copy I, I love this copy so much it's just super pretty and like really well well loved it smells so good i'm gonna read the penguin classic with him very happy with my decision to go through with this tbr journey like it's a little intimidating because there are so many books first book of the year was addy larue and i'm so happy with five stars i think we're gonna have a good year i'm on page 17 of pride and prejudice i've been reading it for three days now but don't worry, I do plan to pick it up this week. I'm also just reading Crescent City, my reread of this. So I'm like filming a vlog for that, but I'm also filming my physical TBR vlog. Brock is on page 80 something, and he says it's starting to like pick up. So I'm excited to read it. I just haven't had time this week. I'm not reading Pride and Prejudice tonight, and I have no updates besides the fact that like the parents, like Elizabeth Bennett's parents are so funny. 
Like her mom is ridiculous. And her dad is just kind of a dick and I kind of like it. It's funny. Oh my God, I'm so pale. I literally match my sweater. Just a quick update on Pride and Prejudice. I'm actually really liking it. I'm on page 52. I think that the, the women in this book are made out to be very, very goofy in order for Elizabeth Bennet to seem like better than them <laughs> in a way. And Mr. Darcy is my husband. Like Brock, quotes out of this book have been brought up in my relationship with Brock. And I've been with Brock for eight years now, seven years now. And I had no idea that I was, I was actually married to Mr. Darcy. I will get his opinion on it as well. I feel like he can chime into this video. That'd be kind of fun. So I will get his opinion when he comes home. Um, it is currently snowing in one degree, one. So it's really, really chilly. Um, I'm picking my new TBR for next month, which I'm doing in reels now. So if you wanna go follow my bookstagram to see what my physical TBR will be, February, March, and so on. I just filmed my February TBR reel and I honestly I got some good ones but I do like this challenge for me because if I don't end up reading any of them I have told myself that when I am when the month is over I'm donating the other books so it's kind of nice like I really am oh here they come I really am motivated to read the ones that I pick but if I don't get to them then it's kind of just a sign that maybe it's not the book for me I shouldn't keep it on my physical TBR I'm very serious about dwindling my TBR down so I picked five books for next month I'm going to film some bookstagram content for them really quick just like February TBR videos and stuff so I'm gonna do that and then get to editing some stuff I'm editing my throne of glass video today because I finished the reread of that recently. So I'm gonna edit that video. That's gonna be a long one. I'm also going to take that thumbnail. I just have some content that I need to film. So talk to you later. Okay. I wanna know your thoughts so far on Pride and Prejudice. Very dialogue heavy. Yeah. There's very little description. I don't know what anyone looks like. I don't know where they're at, how many rooms are in the house or anything. I don't even think they've said that they're in England. I don't even feel like there's that much that's going on too much besides just back and forth marriage type discourse and relationship discourse. Yeah. I feel like the whole plot of where the story is, is like 350-ish pages of a relationship that you like knew was kind of coming by the end, but it's just been stretched out. Do you like it or not? I like it so far, but I don't love it. What page are you on? 137. You gonna catch up, loser? <laughs> I am on page 100 in chapter 19. Um, as you guys saw earlier, that was Brock's opinion on it. I think we both have very similar opinions on this book. It's good. It's good. I find it genuinely funny. Like just the, the humor that is placed in this book. The characters are just really, really out there and kind of crazy and just not likable, but like flawed and goofy ways. Like I don't know how to, it's just very satirical and I'm really liking it, but I have been taking a highlighter to it which I rarely do but these pages are kind of thick which is nice and I can write on it and it doesn't like bleed through the other side I am using this as my bookmark but I have not been tabbing <laughs> so I've just been highlighting overall I'm 25% of the way through I'm having a good time it's not my my typical read but I'm gonna keep going. So I don't expect it to finish it anytime like soon. I wanna finish it this month, but it's still like January 13th. We're not even halfway through the month. So I still have some time. Um, and I plan to pick up The Huntress next, which I'm going to listen to. So I wanted to pull it up. I have it on Libby. I'm going to listen to this while I cook dinner. I have not started it yet. 1.25 speed. I don't know about you guys, but when I start a new audiobook, I can never listen to it on one because it's just so slow. 
but I can never start listening to it on 1.75 or 1.5. Like I have to start it a little bit slower, but one is too slow. And then once I get into it, I can usually up the speed once I get to know like the character voices and stuff. And then I think that's gonna be it for the weekend updates right now. And I will come back hopefully next weekend. I'm Brock, I'm in his sweatshirt, I'm in his office. The Huntress update. So I updated you guys a few hours ago. I randomly started the audiobook and holy shit, Kate Quinn, from the beginning, you are sucked in. Page 45-ish. I love historical fiction, especially as fucked up as it is, World War II. It's just my favorite and like it's my favorite to learn about and to just get a glimpse of like what was possibly going on even if it is fiction it's nice to know like there are people and stories based off these characters that's going really well i'm also filming my crescent city reread at the same time so if you're watching this physical tbr video you're gonna see some crossover <laughs> some parallels to the next video. I won't update again for a while because I start work back tomorrow. So my work week, I struggle really hard to film. So I just don't. <laughs> so I will update back in like five or six days with where I'm at and how I'm feeling. I'm gonna pause this clip and then go start on my Crescent City clip, so. 44% of the way through The Huntress loving it. It is a little eerie with one of the POVs. So there's three point of views, two female and one male POV. They're all connected somehow. And the first female POV, I love. Always entertained to hear her POV. When we get to the second female POV, I'm not as interested, but the second POV is also in this male's POV and I love his. So even though that I don't love the second female's POV as much, it's just not as enter entertaining to me. Female, her name is Nina. Nina's POV is also in Ian's POV. Like he, she's, they're together basically. So I'm really liking Nina, just not her POV, if that makes sense. 430 pages into Crescent City, which that's not a part of this vlog. And then I have not read any more of Pride and Prejudice. I do plan to read more of this this weekend. I plan to finish it this weekend, but I do have a lot left. So 62% through The Huntress by Kate Quinn, which again, I'm just absolutely loving. I'm soaking it up. There's no, I don't really have an update on that one right now, but I know shit's about to go down because it's been leading up to and foreshadowing a lot. So it's I just know something big is about to happen and I want it to happen because this lady who I believe is who they're going to catch is a little liar witch lady. So I'm excited for that. I plan on reading a lot of Pride and Prejudice today. I want to get a lot more done. Brock is almost done and he is loving it. I will get his opinion on that soon. And then also I'm almost done with Crescent City. So there's the possibility I could finish three books this weekend, but I will come back later because I cannot talk while he is barking. I'm going to get coffee with a friend, so I need to shower. It's also snowing. I don't know if we'll cancel or not, but either way, I'm getting coffee. Oh, and I wanted to say, look, I'm adding this to my physical TBR. My bookstagram friend, Jessica, gifted this to me. Thank you, Jessica, for doing that. And she also gifted me these pretty bookmarks. And I was just telling Brock the other day that I needed a new bookmark. Perfect timing. And I got some stickers from her, which I am going to add to my book journal. Like right now, she gave me a lot more than this, but I'll show you a few. Just like so pretty and delicate. And I love anything floral. I will talk to you guys later. Maybe when I'm dressed, like when I'm, when I'm looking a little bit better. Okay, I am back. It is like 4 p.m. and I left at like 11, so it's been a long day. I did end up getting my nails done, so I got like a gray. And I love my nail place, but they definitely overbook a lot. So I waited there for like an hour and a half before I even got my nails done. <laughs> it's okay though. I'm, I had my audiobook and that's exactly what I'm coming on here to chat about. I finished The Huntress and I'm giving it four stars. I love Kate Quinn's writing, very into her. And you know, I've read three, four of her books now, The Diamond Eye, The Rose Code, and The Alice Network. I adore all of them. This one, definitely I noticed like 
parts of it I didn't love as much as others like of her other books but specifically like the point of views I think Nina's point of view in this could have gotten rid of. Nina was in this like all female very legendary Soviet. He was a pilot and it was just like I don't know every scene was the same. <laughs> every single chapter Nina's chapters were just very repetitive. Um, I loved Jordan. So Jordan is the daughter of just an American man in Boston. Jordan's dad gets married to a Nazi. I just wish I had like more info on her background. Even though she is the bad guy in this scenario I still kind of wanted her POV and we didn't get that. So four stars. Really enjoyed the story. Okay. Whew, I, have a, um, I have a weekly phone call with my grandma every Friday, so I'm going to call her in about an hour. Until then, I have some embroidery that I need to do, some orders that I'm going to go do, so I'm going to go do those. What do you have to say? <laughs> oh. oh, she's prideful and she's prejudiced. <laughs> Tell your opinion on pride and prejudice. Speak loud. You want the short, medium, or long version? Medium. Going into it, I was expecting a pretty, like, dry, predictable, romantic tale. And I'd say like for the first 80 or 100 pages, I was like, okay, I see where this is going. I don't know how you're gonna fill time for the next 200 pages, but I'll tell you what, the book was incredible. And I feel like it's a, it's a banger. It's a classic for a reason. And uh, that's why I'm excited for you to actually catch up and finish it because yeah. I just wanna talk about there. it. It's a very charming story because through it, you have all these dynamic, relationships, engagements, failed engagements, or, or potential marriages occurring. There's a lot of anxiety between different characters because of their prejudices or preconceived or misconceived notions of what a character is doing or thinking. There's a lot of miscommunication going on, um, a lot of like absence between characters who then reemerge. Miscommunication, that's the worst trope. Yeah, that's, that trope is all over this. And then you also, what's really sweet in the last 100 pages and in volume three that really captivated me was like the, the character development in such a unique way because the way the story is told, it's so much dialogue as you might have already told them. Mm -hmm. And so you don't really get much like in the heads of characters or behind the scenes, like, but you really just see the transformation of character. And by the end of the story, you see it's not just a transformation from their own desire to change or within, but it's they want to change their character for the other person, for their the other person's yeah. happiness and, and to fit them. So it's a self-sacrifice, a sacrifice of their own personal happiness for the kind of happiness of the union, uh, you could say. So it's it's a beautiful story. Everyone should read it. Yeah. And I was I was thoroughly impressed. Yeah. And then show them your new tattoo. Oh. <laughs> It's, a, it's not finished yet, but it's like, yeah. it's a There'll crack a lot in. more detail. Octopussy cracked in. <laughs> crack in. Octopussy. That's <laughs> Octopussy. what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Of course. Oh, and subscribe to Brock, the active uh, mind. Gorgeous. Stood up way too fast. Um... <laughs> I am gonna go downstairs and I was bawling my eyes out this morning reading Crescent City. I finished that, so that is my fourth book of January. And I finished The Huntress yesterday. Did just complete some Fireheart embroidery um, sweatshirts. So thank you for those who keep ordering. I will come back with an update later. This is not an update, this is just me peeping in. Okay, I'm doing some embroidery right now. It's Wednesday, so I have to go to work in like an hour. But I'm doing some embroidery for my friends because we're going to the midnight release together and I wanted to have something geared towards Crescent City. And I think I'm gonna make them for my Etsy shop as well. So let me show you. So this is just like 
my rough draft sweatshirt. Like I have a lot of different things on here. But my friend wanted this one. Rune Dana knew three things with absolute certainty. And then I think I'm going to do this one right here. I read past my bedtime. And then this one I had to fix because it was super, super thin like the font was. But what blinds an oracle with little eight pointed stars. So I'm definitely going to put these three up on my site probably this weekend. And then I have, I think I'm going to have seven new ones up. So these are just three of them but you guys can probably hear my machine in the back because i'm working on another one and that one is geared towards stone glass so i know this is a physical like physical tbr vlog but i feel like i've still been reading this one for a really long time i'm 75 percent of the way through but i think i'm gonna finish it today or tomorrow i think i'm gonna read a lot of this tonight i'm gonna take a break from my reread of house of sky and breath which i am 270 pages in so it's good it's great i love it and then i haven't started souls and sorrows which is another one this one might get pushed to next month because i don't know if i'll have time because we're like less than one week away from house of flame and shadow so i don't i don't I don't know. I need to go change a thread. Hold on. This is the outro to the vlog. This video is coming out in a few days and this vlog lasted over the whole month of January and I actually had a lot of fun doing it. I think my physical TBR vlogs are going to be like throughout the month, like almost each weekend because I don't like to film during the week while I'm at work. Let's recap what I've read so far and it's only January 24th. So I still have like a week left in January to finish maybe one or two more books and now I've read four books. So The Invisible Life by Addie LaRue. I finished Kingdom of Ash. I read The Huntress by Kate Quinn and I finished Crescent City 1 and I plan to finish Pride of Prejudice definitely within the next seven days. I might actually start one of my February books because on my February TBR, these books right there that you guys don't know about yet, I have the audiobook for. So I might listen. Oh, my mom's must be listening to it. Someone's already 29% of the way through in my family of this book. So I'm going to be listening to that book. I might start that so I can have something to listen to. Completely different genre than Flame and Shadow as well. So I might like swap this book for a February book, if that makes sense. So if you want a bookish sweatshirt, go look at my embroidery shop. Again, the day that this video comes out, I hope to have new sweatshirts on the site. See you guys in the next video.